It's Motivational Monday. I am always, always so pleasure to be here with you guys because it's the one time a week that you get to refocus, hear a motivating word, and get back on track with your NCLEX uh, pursuit, the pursuit to your nursing license. You're actually at the final stage of the journey. You've already done nursing school. You've already passed all of those final senior practicums, and now it's literally just time to take the one test. So. As always, this is your Monday motivation. Let's talk NCLEX. Hi, everybody. Yes. Hey, welcome. If it's your first time joining us, um, I was named Regina Callion, and I just happen to be the number one NCLEX instructor on planet Earth. I'm so, so happy, happy to have that title. And the only reason why I have that title is because I have the number one nursing students here on this planet and we go hard for NCLEX. Like there is no place on the earth that I will not do an NCLEX review, all right, period. So we're getting ready <laughs> to do what we came here for, which is mo Monday motivation, yeah. Hey, let me tell you about this event. It is the most happening place for nursing students all over. This is Remar Nurse University is coming up. Did you sign up for it? The site, the website that you need to go on if you have not been is remarnurse.com backslash R N U. And that's R is in Roger, N is in November, U is in umbrella. You gotta sign up for this event. And I'm telling you guys, so many of you have signed up already. And remember, this is a free event, okay? This event is, is just like all of our others. It's totally free, all right? Um, but, 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 there are benefits to paying. There are benefits to paying. And I, I'll explain it to you later. But anyhow, so let me show you the cities that I'll be going to because the difference between this live Facebook event and the others is that I will physically be in locations around the United States and you guys will get to watch the classes live online or you can come to the actual class, which I think is going to be the most incredible experience. So here are the cities again. So we are doing actually, it's a six city speaking tour. It's a six city speaking tour. And you guys are already in the building. You guys are already up. It's, it's a six city speaking tour for myself, <laughs> but five for you guys. All right. So let me give you, let me give you the locations. So we are starting we are starting Remar Nurse University in Chicago, in Chicago on May 6th. And I know a lot of you have signed up for that location and I'm so excited about coming to Chicago. I go there, it seems like every year. I'm also hitting the next week. Remember, this is every Monday night in May. We're doing an NCLEX review from these cities. So we're gonna start in Chicago, May 6th. The next Monday is May 11th and I will be I'm sorry, yeah, oh, I'm sorry, May 13th. Um, I will be in Atlanta. It's my first time coming to Atlanta to do an NCLEX review. Uh, I'm going to LA May the 20th. Yes, the West Coast. Uh, I'm going to Los Angeles May the 20th. I'm headed all the way back to the other side of the United States, going to New York for May 27th. And then I'm gonna wrap it up actually in June on June the 3rd, on June the 3rd, I will be in Miami, Florida, and that is going to be our final session for Remar Nurse University. So, so many of you have signed up to be a part of this uh, U.S. speaking tour. I, I am, oh man, oh man, it's going to be great. So, I was saying that you can watch this on Facebook, I believe on YouTube as well, um, for free. However, many of you have invested in the bundle package, right? Invested in the bundle package. Let me just show you what the bundle package is. So you can, of course, watch all of the lectures online for free as complimentary. Um, or you can even come to the live event for free. We Listen, we make it a no excuse policy. However, if you purchase the bundle package 
which includes the printed workbook that you would take your notes in. You also get the official, 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 official Remar Nurse University shirt that I'm wearing right now. Um, and then you get priority seating when you come to the location. So that's like the right up in the front, right under me <laughs> seating. And not only that, but you get an additional discount to the DVD self-study package. Now, all of this for just $25. Um, so really, again, it's an investment that I would say you should make. Now, I, the shirts are in. So we have the shirts for you guys who have... Um, who have purchased them so you get to wear them. I want you to wear them to the class, okay? Wear them to the class, wear them at home. If you're watching online, it matters not to me, but I do want you to have it, all right? Um, and I like these shirts. They're, they're, the, they're the traditional Remar blue and they have the Remar Nurse University. So just $25. Now, another thing that I wanna talk about is not only do you get the shirt for $25, but I have here, uh, this is the first release of the workbook so remember the workbooks are going to be, I have to turn them in uh, April 15th, right? That's my deadline for editing and things like that. So I'm still editing the workbook. However, I want to let you guys know who um, signed up for the bundle package. This workbook is going to be so amazing for you. So, and I'll just share with you some of the topics I'll be discussing during Remar Nurse University, Remar Nurse University. So this workbook, you guys are asking me, this workbook is not for free, okay? We're physically shipping this workbook out to those of you who have purchased the bundle package. Now you can watch my lectures. I'll be lecturing um, all the information I'm gonna lecture on from this workbook, you can get that for free. But I really want you guys to consider buying the workbook because with the workbook, I have um, questions that you will be able to do like, um, every week before the class begins, I have pre-class questions that I want you to try to attempt to do on your own before I do the lecture. And it's just a way for you to see what you know going into the class. Okay, so I got a testimonial here. Uh, Nurse Shari says, hi, Regina, I passed NCLEX PN and NCLEX RN. Okay, thank you for your Remar products. I'm here from California. Congratulations, thank you for hopping on and telling me how to, um, telling not only me how you pass, but um, just that you pass both NCLEX PN and RN. I, I don't know too many people who have taken both. So congratulations to yourself. Another one, um, Miss N Nurse Bell. Hi, Regina, I passed my NCLEX last March 30th. Thanks, Regina. All right, a new testimonial. Welcome to the nursing community. Hey, this is what we do here at Remar uh, Nurse University, because that's what this is about to be. Um, okay, so we have Nurse Fernando as well. Um, she says, Regina is the best. I, pla I passed my NCLEX RN using her products. It's the best investment. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So I'm talking about um, the workbook for Remar Nurse University. And then I get another testimonial from Nurse Aputa. She says, I passed my NCLEX RN. Oh, she had the best experience. I passed it at 75 questions. Thanks to God, Regina and Mark. DVD self-study is a blast. All right. Studying. Studying is a blast. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, perfect. So as I was saying, um, when you have the workbook for the Remar Nurse University, you'll see that you have pre-class questions um, that I want you to attempt to do. Also, Nurse Nurse Ginny, Nurse Ginny, Regina, I can't thank you enough. Met with the chief nursing officer this morning at a hospital here in Jacksonville, Florida. Is does that mean you're working? Does that mean you're about to get a great job? Congratulations, congratulations to you. Oh, okay, so. Um, I created a workbook just for Remar Nurse University. I think that you guys will really enjoy the topics we're going to talk about. I have gotten so many emails about um, the ethical scopes of practice for nursing, when you're taking NCLEX, how to approach those types of questions. I know it is a huge, huge, huge concern because there are um, there are increasing 
the legal questions. They want you to know what your responsibilities are as a nurse. So we're gonna be talking about some ethical issues. I have here confusion alert because I think there's two topics that a nursing students really get confused about when you're speaking about ethics of nursing. So I did, I, I started that. I also created new activity pages. So you guys know I have the activity book. I created activity pages just for uh, Remar Nurse University. So these are what you can do by yourself, but we'll also go over it during the class. So I'm telling you guys, um, you can watch the lectures for free, but all of this information, all of these questions, you won't have them. Um, if you don't get the workbook. And so you'll be able to take notes, but this may be a lot of notes for you to try to take. Um, so for week two, I am focusing on prioritization. And I sat down and you guys know, I do go over prioritization in the DVD self-study package. I, I like to do those types of questions, but as I come across different types of priority questions, I realized that there was actually three ways you can approach prioritization questions. So I am going to show you guys the other two ways that I look at priority questions, okay? So week two will be heavy on prioritization as well as follow-up legal issues in nursing. Um, so I'm excited about that. I created an activity page where we'll be going over uh, priority questions. I think that it is gonna be kind of cool. Let me give you like example. So I, I did like a flash priority where I only gave you two clients and I wanted you to pick or you will pick um, the two. So for example, um, who should the nurse see first here? Let me do this one. Who should the nurse see first? What do you guys think? Um, oh, oh, wait, hold on. I gotta give this shout out. Uh, nurse Mojini. Hi, Regina. Thank you so much. I passed my NCLEX PN on Tuesday. Congratulations. Congratulations. Um, thank you for coming on here. You're a nurse now. Thank you. All right. Um, no, um, Gilly, this is for Remar Nurse University. I'm going over the workbook for Remar Nurse University. And somebody asked me how thick it is. Expect it to be about 50 pages. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Mark. Okay. So I'm, I'm just talking about the topics I'll be going over for R and U. I don't want you to miss it. So like, here's one of the priority questions from the activity page. Who should the nurse see first? Should the nurse see a client with a temperature of a hundred degrees Fahrenheit with varicella or a client with the temperature of a hundred degrees Fahrenheit with HIV? Who should the nurse see first? Mm, right? So I have a way to look at this, these types of questions because NCLEX is getting so sophisticated. Um, so who would you see first? A client with a temperature of 100 degrees with varicella or a client with a temperature of 100 degrees with HIV? Mm, 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 mm. So good. So we're going to go over these really tough, tough questions. All right. Okay. One more testimonial coming in. Testimonials are coming in. I hope that you guys who are uh, studying for NCLEX are taking note of these testimonials and using them to encourage yourself. Uh, what does nurse Andrew Dave say? Hi, Regina. I pass NCLEX RN with 146 questions. Thank you so much. Love quick facts. <laughs> God bless you, Mark and Regina, abundantly. You guys are helping a lot to achieve their dream. That's right. So I appreciate that so much. Thank you for your, your, your well wishes and your prayers and your motivation to myself and Mark, because sometimes um, we feel the weight of Remar Review, but it's a good thing. It's our ministry. So a lot of people are saying, hmm, I would see the nurse with varicella first. Some people are saying I would see the nurse with HIV first. So if both had, if both had a hundred degree temperatures, somebody had varicella, somebody had HIV, I am going to see the client with, does everybody know? All right, varicella, I've already said varicella, uh, HIV. I'm going to see the client with HIV first, okay? I'm gonna see the client with HIV first, simply based on this, okay? Simply based on this. They both have the same issue going on, but if I, if I go 
in the client's room with varicella first and then go to the client's room with HIV, I have a higher chance of doing what? I have a higher chance of infecting that patient with HIV. So it's a, it's a principle as you kind of have to reserve your patients who are um, infectious or dirty for last sometimes because you don't want to spread that or possibly spread that to the clients that are clean. All right. So there's different ways to look at priority questions. And so I'm going to go over the other ways that I found. So that's week two. Um, I have this and I, I'm going over the workbook. I'm going over the workbook. You guys got to get it. I'm sorry. You, you're going to have a hard time doing this class. All right. Week three. I am so excited about week three. Um, because I'm doing arterial blood gases and you guys know, I love arterial blood gases. I use Rome. I use the word problem method to get through them. But for years I have been asked, well, Regina, how do I figure out if the pH is normal? How do I do the compensated arterial blood gases? How do you do compensated, partially compensated, uncompensated? Oh my goodness. So I have a way for you guys to do that. And I'm happy to share it with you. It took me, um, but I think I figured out a way for you to do it. All right. And the way that I figure out for you to do it is usually it's just by using the PCO2 in the bicarb. And so I created this chart here. Can you see it? Can you see it? I don't know. I created this chart here. We're going to fill it in together. And at the end of it, you will have your compensated respiratory acidosis compensated respiratory alkalosis. And um, I think it'll be super helpful to you guys. Okay. All right. And I get a lot of, I get a lot of questions or people saying, Hey, if I have the DVD package, can I still do R in you? Yes. If you have the DVD package, please come to Remarners University, get this workbook because it's not the same as the DVD student workbook. Okay. Um, I, so Candy, will I be going over interdisciplinary team? Do you want me to go over interdisciplinary teams in Remar Nurse University? Um, let me know. Okay. So week four, I am, because I'm still adding to this book week four, I do want to go over orthopedics. Um, there are some topics that I have to keep in Remar Nurse University, like EKGs. I wanted to switch out and not do EKGs this year. Cause I, I have been doing it. But because we have so many new nursing students joining us, I want to definitely make sure I go over um, EKGs. So I'll be doing that. I'm also doing delegation assignment. Have to do that. I always have to do certain topics. So I'm, I'll be doing that. And then there's a final exam in the end. There's a final exam in the end. All right. So yes, Candy, I will add interdisciplinary teams just for you. All right. Mark, <laughs> Mark is like, no more topics, no more topics. All right. So anyhow, this is the workbook. This is not, this is the skeleton of the workbook. It'll have a cover on it. It'll have um, other things added, but this is my informational. This is my informational skeleton of Remar Nurse University. So take advantage of the bundle package because you get the shirt and you get the um, the workbook and you get the discount. And if you're coming to the live review, you get the priority seating. It's just $25. Um, sign up. Okay. Sign up, sign up for that. And we'll have the link on the Facebook page. The link, is it in this video as well? We'll put the link in the video for you to sign up again. Remar Nurse University starts the first Monday night in May. And when you sign up, you actually will get the schedule. You'll get the schedule as well. Okay. So, all right, what'd you say? Oh, okay. Also, you guys know we play this little game uh, when we do the, the questions. Uh, and and it, the more we share, the, the longer we go. Is the class online? Yes, the class is online. You'll be able to watch it just how you're watching me now. You'll be able to watch RNU University. I want you to sign up for the event so that you can get the notifications. Also, for those of you who want to purchase, again, the workbook, you do that um, through the link as well. You're able to sign up for the bundle package. All right. So the bundle package, bundle and save. It also, and I think it'll enhance the class. It will enhance the experience uh, for you because you're going to get the printed workbook. We mail that directly to you. There will be no PDF versions of this workbook released. It will only be a physical book. All right. 
Um, oh, Candace, I can't wait to see you in Chicago. I cannot wait to meet you in Chicago. You might have to do this class. Um, so everything will be coming out. I know you guys are like, where's the workbook? I signed up. Where's my t-shirt? Where's the workbook? Those things will be given to you. I promise. We just got the t-shirts in literally five minutes before I started this live. So things will be coming. They'll be released. Okay. The workbook isn't released yet. Okay. So I, this is the skeleton of it. I just wanted to come on and show you guys the topics. All right. So they're coming to you. They're coming to you. All right. Okay. So Remarch University, you'll hear me talking a lot about it. Think about the topics that you know you need to be there for. All right. Uh, so we're going over that prioritization. We're going over delegation. I want to see classes of you coming EKGs. I want to see schools represented. If you know you're in nursing school, you know your class needs to be there. Shout out this event and send me an email. We'll send you a flyer. Okay. Um, can't wait to see you guys either. I, I'm so excited about coming to Los Angeles, Chicago. I'm coming to meet you guys. Also, know I'm coming to eat. So I look for the best restaurants in the city and I go there for a food fest. Okay. Um, the workbook comes with the workbook, the t-shirt and a discount is $25, just $25 for the complete RNU experience. All right. So let's get into it. My friends, we are going to do our Monday motivation. I think this topic is super, super, um, motivational. Number one, it's just motivational, but it's real. It's real. And this is it. My Monday motivation is life doesn't get easier. Life doesn't get easier. And the application for this principle here um, is that, oh, here's the application for this principle, that we are going to announce a winner, a winner at the end of this broadcast. And the winner, their NCLEX review will be paid for by Remar. However, the principle applies because here, you have to be willing to make an investment in yourself. All right. You have to be willing to make an investment in yourself. Things don't happen until you put your foot in the road and get started. Like um, Mark and I learned this when we went to this conference for uh, um, entrepreneurs. It, it's like the map doesn't appear until you get going. And sometimes we think that life somehow will get easier. Life sometimes somehow will get easier. And I'm here to tell you that it really doesn't. Something happens to you in order for you to be able to withstand the challenges that life brings. All right. So we will be announcing that winner. But um, let me give you some let me give you an application of life doesn't get easier. Oof. And this is our amazing testimony. Nurse Box. Um, I don't know if you saw her video, but she shared it. Uh, she shared it with us. Nurse Box had so many, so many challenges in nursing school. I mean, I literally, I had like goosebumps listening to her because she, one of the biggest things I think that, that can happen, one of the biggest tragedy, tragedies that I can imagine is that she lost her mom. You know, she lost her mom, all right? She persevered through that situation. And then it was just like challenges after challenges. Somebody will resonate with this. In nursing school, she said she was homeless. She was going from house to house. She didn't have money. She went to nursing school one day to take an exam. And while she was in there, her car got repossessed. So she went in with a car, came out, didn't have a car. I mean, you talk about problems on problems. Like this is what her experience was through nursing school, nursing school within itself, nursing school within itself is can be a tragedy for some of us because we have the instructors that, that, that are not really there to teach. I, I don't know. I mean, the subjects are not clear. We have to get up for clinicals. I mean, nursing with nursing school in and of itself is traumatic. But then to have these outside traumas, these life challenges, and that's what I love about Remar nurses is that we're real nursing students and we share our stories. We're not paid actors, you know, we're, we're, we're not people that are that are painted up and, you know, propped up and under lights to speak good about a product. No, this is what we're living every day. Like this is our life through the process of nursing, right? As we learn nursing. And I love this testimony because through all of those challenges, she says, I, I am not expecting things to get easier. 
I'm expecting things to remain the same and I have to rise to the level of my life, all right, or what I'm being thrown at in life. And that's what you have to do this week. You have to rise to the occasion. And so this nurse went in, man, she went into the exam just ready. Like it is what it is. She studied the DVD package. You know, she had the quick facts. She did what she had to do. You know, she, she's taking the exam. She said after 85 questions, the exam shut off. And she said, I, I, I just, I wasn't sure, like I wanted them to know that I knew, that they knew, that I knew, that I that I came here to pass the exam, right? And so um, she ended up, of course, passing the exam. She came back, told her story to motivate you guys, to let you know that there is nothing that can stand between you and this nursing license when you want it bad enough. But at the same time, if you want to find excuses why you don't have it, they will be there. You will find every excuse why you don't have your nursing license and you will be comfortable with those excuses. All right. But if you want to overcome and if you want to get your nursing license through crazy challenges, she came back to say it can be done. She said, if I did it, you can do it. I mean, I can't imagine being homeless not knowing where I'm going to live and still studying for this exam. What, excuse, what excuses do you have this week that are keeping you from studying? Because she had them all, like she had them all and she overcame, overcame. So um, life doesn't get easier. So she really illustrated that. <laughs> she really illustrated that for us. Ma'am, thank you so much. Thank you guys every time that you take a moment or a second to come back and let us know that you did it, that you got your nursing license. You got your nursing license. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. So invest in yourself, okay? You have to do it. You have to do it. Um, make the road a lot easier by getting the things that you need, period. Just do it. Just do it. All right, so... Life doesn't get easier, all right? And I think we have to, going back to this, we really have to anticipate more challenges than what we are told by society, right? Because most of us, when we think about becoming an adult, when we think about the challenges that we have to encounter as we um, progress in our careers, in our life, the challenges usually are these, right? These are our challenges that we think about, that we consider uh, I have to find like I have to be in the right relationship. Like I have to find somebody to marry me. Right. That's a challenge that I'm expecting. I have to pass NCLEX. If I can just pass NCLEX, if I can just find somebody to love me, if I can just get this job, like if I can just make about thirty dollars an hour, uh, if I can just raise these kids and get them to 18, then um, things will be good. Like these are the challenges that we are anticipating. Right. These are the things that we're working towards really a very small scope, a very small scope of challenges. And we're prepared and we're amped up to deal with them. Right. But if anything happens outside of these things, it can crush us. Like, you know, we don't prepare for if I get sick. Right. And that's why I love to read my nurse stories. If I get diagnosed with brain cancer, if I lose my mother, Right. If I lose a leg or a limb or, you know, if my husband becomes abusive, like these are the challenges that we don't anticipate, but happen to us every day. Like, you know, if my if my car gets stolen or somebody breaks into my house and assaults me like. And so what I want you guys to think about what I want you guys to think about today is this. And this is a picture for you guys who can't see it. This is a picture um, for you guys who can't see it, it's a guy and he's actually just scaling. He's actually just climbing that there in the picture. You don't see any you don't see any top. <laughs> you don't see any top. You don't see any finish line. And literally, that is the mindset that we have to get in this week. We have to understand that there is always going to be there is always going to be a reason to climb. There's always going to be a challenge. There's always going to be something more for us to do. So it's not just about passing NCLEX. If you think that this community here is just about passing NCLEX, then you're here for the wrong reason. Because after you pass NCLEX, what are you supposed to do? 
What is the next challenge? The next challenge is to support the next group of nursing students. It's to support the next generation of nurses. You're supposed to turn around, lift out your hand, pull the next person up. And so that is what we, that's, that's what we have to strive for. Like what you're dealing with now um, is momentary. It's very temporary. And so I need you to see beyond that so you can keep going. Because once you achieve your success, you have to be ready to do this. And that's basically accept the responsibility of the next challenge. That is what you're gearing up for. Okay. The things that you're facing today, you will overcome them. You will overcome them. But once you overcome them, once you overcome these challenges, guess what's going to be waiting for you? Another challenge. Yes, another challenge. You will always be striving for a better position, right? And I'm learning this. I'm learning this as, um, as a nurse, as a mother, as an entrepreneur. Like there is not going to be a place where I'm just going to settle into a comfort zone. If that happens, my world is going to be, is going to be pretty devastated. Because I have to be able to push. I have to be able to push um, to carry us to the next level. I, I can't be the, the face of Remar Review and I'm just chilling. Like, so I'm ready for this, all right? Because I understand that life doesn't get easier. You just get stronger. Like, that's what it is. Once you're able to beat these challenges and overcome these challenges, you have a new strength. You have a new experience. You have a new reserve of wisdom. And that's what makes you capable and responsible for the next challenge. And so um, with Remar Review, we're creating this amazing community. But man, does it come with responsibilities? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so you guys are embracing that. You guys are embracing the challenges and the responsibility that comes with it. Everybody wants to be the boss. Like everybody wants to be the boss, but everybody doesn't want the responsibility of a boss. And so you have to be able to embrace all parts of being a boss in your life. OK, um, there's a lot of people that would love to come in and be the CEO of a company, but CEO have have CEO problems. Right. Um, and so in your life, you're the boss of your life, but you're going to have big boss problems and you're going to have to understand that it's not going to get easier. You're going to have to get stronger and you will. You will. You will get stronger. You will get stronger. All right. So our Monday motivation is served okay <laughs> our monday motivation is served life doesn't get easier quit complaining quit waiting for somebody to save you nobody's coming okay let me just tell you nobody's coming you need to pull yourself up all right you need to dig down dig down where your strength is dig down where your principles are dig down where your god is dig down all right and determine to use all that you have because most of us I'm telling us I'm telling you guys most of us are very blessed we are abundantly blessed and we have access access to resources that many people pray for all right um, I like this picture I like this picture um, so it, it says life doesn't get easier you just get stronger and I shared this on Facebook but it literally it's a little guy and there's like rocks being thrown at him and it's painful to him. He's like shrinking back from the rocks because they're falling from the sky. And um, and then you see him in another image. He's wearing the same clothes, but he has all these muscles. He's bigger. He's like busting out of his shirt. He has muscles and he has a shield now. And those same rocks are falling down on him, but he's able to block himself with the shield. And you can tell that somehow he's gotten stronger from being um, from being assaulted and attacked by these things. And that's how it is in life. You know, there's things that beat us down. There are so many things that beat us down, man, in life. Um, experiences that some of us have that nobody should have gone through. But through the process, we do get stronger and we, and we develop spiritual muscles and we develop um, character, right? And also at the same time, we are we're able to develop compassion for those who um, may be where we used to be 
right? Maybe where we used to be. And so um, it is it is a tremendous responsibility. It is a tremendous responsibility to accept challenges in your life. And I like that, Susan, but not complain, <laughs> okay? To accept your life for what it is and, all, and be determined to work through it in a healthy, in a healthy way, all right? In a healthy way. I'll talk more about RE and you um, at the end of the program, okay? All right. All right. So, um, hey, are you guys ready for NCLEX questions? Shall we begin our Let's Talk NCLEX? Monday Motivation has been served. Let's do some NCLEX questions. All right. Um, let's go. Let's try to get there's how many? There's 465 of us now. All right. There's about what? 52 shares. How many? 65. All right. Um, I have four questions reserved for you guys. If we can get to 150 shares, I will release, release two more questions. How about that? All right. 150 shares. Let's go, Remar nurses. That's the challenge. 150 shares. We currently have 65 shares. All right. I have four questions prepared for you guys. Shall we begin? <laughs> All right. Number one. Here we go. The nurse prepares to give a 13 month old child an intramuscular injection. At what site should the nurse administer the injection? Number one, the dorsal gluteal. Two, the ventral gluteal. Three, the deltoid. Or four, the vastus lateralis. Here we go, 13 month old, 13 month old. Marie in the house, thank you for being here. Um, dorsal gluteal, and I'm saying these, make sure you know where they are. All right, in your mind, I want you to visualize where these things are. Don't just give me the right answer. Dorsal gluteal, do you know where that is? Ventral gluteal, the deltoid, and the vastus lateralis. Oh, I see the answers coming in. Thank you guys for your participation. Uh, the correct answer is, bring it on home to you guys, Mm -hmm. Of course, the vastus lateralis is where you want to give IM injections for your infants, um, primarily really anybody under the age of 36 months, you're going to reserve the vastus lateralis for their IM injections. This is the thicky, thicker part of the muscle. Um, after 36 months, you do have the ability to use which which muscle is going to be the next best? What do you guys think? What is the next best after the vastus lateralis for injections in children? Mm hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, that's going to be, I think I saw it, um, the deltoid. Okay. The deltoid muscle is going to be the best for that deep IM injection into small children. Yes, Charlotte. Yes. Three. Okay, let's try this one. All right, I need you to go ahead and calculate this APGAR score. Ooh, <laughs> I switched it up on you guys. You guys were looking for a uh, choice one, two, three, four. No, I want you to calculate this APGAR score. So we have here, if the appearance, because we're gonna look at the five categories. So we have appearance, pulse, um, grimace, all right, also activity or respirations, okay? So this is an APGAR score. Hmm, here we go, here we go. So the appearance, if the core is cyanotic, if the core is cyanotic, what would you give that number? All right, what would you give that characteristic? All right, for grimace, for grimace, all right. If there was a facial reaction to stimuli, facial reaction to stimuli, what would you score? What would you score? The activity, the activity of the baby. You have the legs flexing weakly, the legs flexing weakly. And then for respirations, if there are no respirations, what are you going to give 
what are you going to give that baby? So go ahead and title it all up. Title it all up. And what are we gonna give the baby? Okay, <laughs> Abgar, yeah, you forgot about your Abgar. Um, you see Grimace there. Sometimes that will be your reflex, your reflex or irritability, okay? Your reflex or irritability. So if the appearance, if the skin color or appearance, if the core is cyanotic, what do we have to give that baby? Mm -hmm. The Grimace or the reflex irritability, if that is a facial reaction to stimuli, what are we going to give that baby? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The activity, we have the activity. We have the legs flex weekly. The legs flex weekly. And then no respirations here. Mm. Total it all up and everybody should have. There we go. We are going to give that baby should be a two. That baby should be a two here. All right. Because if the core is cyanotic, mm -mm, mm -mm, nope, we need to see. Um, well, I guess I can just go. Over. No, no, no. I don't want to go over it just yet because I have another one and I don't want it to be too easy. OK. <laughs> All right. Um, so the core is cyanotic. That's a zero. If there's no pulse present, that's a zero as well, all right? Um, the facial reaction to stimuli, that's going to be a one. That's going to be a one, okay? That's gonna be a one. If the legs, what was the next one here? Yes, if the legs are flexing weakly, that's going to be a one too, okay? If the legs are flexing weakly, that's going to be a one. And then if there is no respirations, that's gonna be a zero. So that only gives us a total score of two. That only gives us a total score of two out of the five categories, okay? Did you get it? All right, if you didn't get it, let's try another one. Let's see what I have here. All right, next one. All right, let me do it again. Let me see here. Of course it doesn't want to work. Okay, let me try it. Let me try it again. See, it only happens. It only happens to me when Mark steps out the room. All right, um, then the computer starts acting weird, and he's gone. All right. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. I, what I can do is I can go. All right. So now here it is. Now it's working. All right. Here we go. Let's do this one. Um, do I want to reveal? Let me make sure. Let me make sure I'm not revealing the wrong. Okay. Okay, bam, here we go, here we go. Okay, so we have here another one, two, three, four, five categories. Whew, is back working again, guys. All right, appearance. If the trunk is pink and the hands are blue, what do we score that baby? The trunk is pink, the hands are blue. The pulse, hmm. The pulse, the heart rate is 115. 115, what are we going to score that? The grimace, okay, this also can be called the reflex irritability. The grimace is no reaction. The activity, with the activity, the baby has spontaneous movements, spontaneous movements. <laughs> and respiration. The baby cries weakly. The baby, again, is going to cry weakly. Oh, I love this. I love these. I love these. Because you have here, you have here alternatives that mean very similar things to the typical APGAR score. So it's just reworded differently. And you see this a lot um, uh, when NCLEX questions are present. They try to mix up the language. So again, what is our APGAR score here? Uh, we have the, for the appearance, if the trunk is pink and the hands are blue, what are you gonna score that at? The pulse, if the heart rate is 115, what shall we give this baby? All right, and then the grimace, there is no reaction. There is no reaction. Activity, uh, spontaneous movement. Activity, spontaneous movement. 
And then respirations, if that baby cries weakly, what shall we give this baby? And I see different answers on, I see a lot of fours, I see some fives, I do see many sixes, I see some sevens, that's okay, I see some sevens. I wouldn't go quite that high. Um, let's see, I see anything lower than four. Nothing lower than four, okay? Nothing lower than four. Okay, so let me reveal the answer. The answer revealed is, here we go, all right? So if we have, the total answer is six. So congratulations to you guys who got six here. The appearance, we got to give the, the trunk is pink, the hands are blue. That's going to be a one, all right? Because you have the extremities being cyanotic. So anytime the whole baby does not have a uniform color, um, you know, it, it's going to drop it down. It's going to drop it down. So that's going to be a one here. All right, now if the trunk and the hands were blue, that's gonna be a zero. But the trunk is actually pink, the hands are blue, that's a one. All right, pulse, anything greater than 100, you have gotta give it a two. So the pulse is 115 here, so we're gonna give that baby a two. The reflex or irritability, there was no response, no reaction, I'm sorry, that's gonna be a zero. All right, is it coming back to you now, this APGAR <laughs> um, activity? Spontaneous movement, this is a great sign. This is a great sign. The baby is um, the baby is going to be well flexed. There's going to be active, all right, active tone, resisting pulling them out or resisting extension. The baby's very active. You want to give that um, you want to give that baby a two there. All right, respirations. Um, the baby has a weak cry. All right, a weak cry. So. So we have to give this a one, all right? Because the baby's not able, if the baby had proper respirations, normal respirations, how would that cry be? Oh, if the lungs were expanding and getting oxygen, that cry would be loud and strong. But the baby has a weak cry. So the cry is gonna be precipitated by uh, decreased respiration, decreased uh, lung expansion ability. This baby needs some um, oxygen support here. So we're only going to give it a one. We're only going to give it a one. All right. So that's going to be a six in total. And you guys are asking about that heart rate. Mm, okay. For the heart rate here, remember, you have to use the APGAR score number. The APGAR has its own heart rate preference. All right, so it's not, yeah, normal heart rate is 120 to 160, right? But for the APGAR, Patricia APGAR is the one who created this chart. And I talked about this before, um, but she, she literally changed the way um, babies were cared for. She literally advanced neonatology leaps and bounds, this physician, because, um, before, before you, you guys know what would happen to babies that were born before the APGAR score was implemented. And before it happened, I don't I have to be so careful with my words because I don't want to seem um, I, I just don't want to seem inappropriate. However, if a baby was if a baby was born and the um, clinician, the obstetrician saw that the feet were blue. Right. Or if a baby was born and it didn't have a long cry, like it didn't have a loud cry, say it didn't have a loud cry and the feet were blue, the physician would tell the mother, I'm sorry, but your baby is not going to make it. It's a stillborn. Like they would literally classify babies who were alive with pulses. Um, <laughs> they would classify them as stillborns and lay the baby to the side. And, and literally, it would have respiratory complications until it died, okay? Patricia Apgar said, this can't be, this cannot be. Like, what about if we give the child some oxygen? What about that? How about we just try giving the baby some oxygen? How about we try stim stimulating them with massage, right? And so she created this scale, and um, it literally blew the, mort the mortality rate out, like it, it, it just, oh, it was just so good. So anyways, the heart rate for the APGAR scale is 100. 
All right, anything greater than 100, this baby has a chance to live. Like this is a great looking baby. Let's try to let's try to look it all together and resuscitate it. All right. So the things you learn, the things you learn here at Remar Review. I mean, it's just great, right? The history of our medical, um, we we really uh, we really like really did not have it at all um, together medically a couple centuries ago. It was just inhumane. Um, so anyhow, the APGAR score we're not going to do 120 to 160. We're going to just do 100. Okay. All right. Let's, let's go. On. Let's go on guys. All right. Next question. All right. We're going to go back to the old fashioned way of questions. All right. Which of the following question number four, which of the following is mandatory for the emergency room nurse to report? Select all that apply, select all that apply. Number one, West Nile virus. Yes or no. Two, herpes simplex, yes or no? Mm -mm -mm. Three, gunshot wounds. Four, elder abuse or neglect. What do you think? We're looking for things that you have to report. Five, bites from an unknown dog. Oh, oh yes. If you're working in the emergency room, what do you have to report? These are things you want to know. These are things you want to know for your NCLEX exam. All right. And this, and this is a select all that apply question. So um, is there more than one answer? Mm, it could be. It could be. All right. I see you guys. I love the participation. I see you guys bringing them on in. This is, this is select all that apply. So I'm just going to give you a hint. Yes, there's more than one right answer. Okay. More than one right answer here. Hey, there are over 550 Remar nurses here with us live. How amazingly awesome is that? Coming together, coming together for a common good. Let's pass this NCLEX. Here we go. The answers are, some of you may be surprised. Some of you may be surprised. Here are the answers. Oh, you have to report West Nile virus. And this is the CDC recommendation. These are not my things, okay? You guys know I love the CDC. So CDC says West Nile virus, uh-huh, you have to, yes. Gunshot wounds, you need to report that, um, not necessarily to the CDC, but you need to report that to the local authorities, okay? Um, elder abuse and neglect, yes. You have a responsibility to do that. And then bites from an unknown dog, yes. One of your responsibilities as a practical nurse or a registered nurse is that you have to protect the public. All right. That's and that's what NCLEX, if you're studying for your state boards, that's what our NCLEX is about. All right. So if you're international nursing nurse in nursing school, you may not have learned these things. All right. And that's OK. But when you sit down to take your your state licensure exam, you have a responsibility to know them. You have a responsibility to know very basic things. And, you know, we have an international nursing community. I could probably just say, what country are you from right now? And we would literally get hundreds of countries because that's how that's just how we roll. Um, but for your NCLEX exam, you got to know how to keep the public safe. And there's responsibilities. There's responsibilities that come along with that. So let me share my notes here. According to the CDC, and this is the 2018 National Guidelines, all right, these are the diseases that you have to report. So I'm just going to say them out loud, all right, and you can repeat them back with me. We can read them together so that you remember them, all right? So you've got to report anthrax, okay? St. Louis encephalitis virus, West Nile virus. Botulism. Good job. Cancer. Chlamydia. Congenital syphilis. What's congenital syphilis? Why do you have to report that? All right. Why do you have to report congenital syphilis? There's more. There's more. Dengue virus. Dengue virus. Love Jamaica. Love Jamaica. All right, you guys know what dengue is. Gonorrhea, hepatitis A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. 
Hepatitis A, B, and C. HIV, HIV. Lyme disease, Lyme disease. MMR, MMR, measles, mumps, rubella. Polio virus, mm-hmm. How many shares do we currently have? Is this my last question? Oh, shingalosis, shingalosis. Smallpox, I'm talking about the things you need to report, okay? Tuberculosis, varicella, yellow fever, and Zika, Zika. Did you guys get that? All right. And listen, guys, this is what the CDC recommends for you to do, okay? Now, you guys could ask me why you have to report Zika or you know what you can do. <laughs> you can ask me why and wait around for me to never answer that question. I'm never going to answer. I'm never going to answer that question. All right. Because you know what you got to do to find the answer. You know, you know. All right. You know, you already know. Do I have to say it? Do I have to say you got to look it up? You got to look it up. It literally will make you a better nurse if you know for yourself. OK. All right. So, 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 so. All right. How many shares do we have? Can somebody tell me? Do we have enough to go on? Do we have enough? No. OK. All right. All right. I think we do. I think we do. I'm waiting for somebody to put up how many shares, how many shares. I know all this. Leo. <laughs> Thank you, Leo. Leo says you got to look that thing up. You got to look that thing up. All right. And this is my hobby horse. And you guys brought it out. So since you brought out my hobby horse, I got to ride it now. So here is the thing. When you make the when you make the initiative to look something up, you are putting yourself in a position of leadership because you now have knowledge that you previously didn't have before. And listen, there are some things that you have a question about that probably there's 600 people on here. 600 people have that same question, right? 600 people want to know why is hepatitis B on the list? But you know how many people will look it up to really find out? Probably one, probably one. And so that one person that makes an effort to look it up, now all of a sudden becomes an expert, right? Now all of a sudden becomes the leader, the authority, because they have knowledge that 500, 600 people don't have. And so I'm trying to train you guys to take responsibility for being a leader, all right? And taking responsibility is not asking somebody else something that you can do for yourself. One thing I will never do, I won't ever ask you guys to do something for me that I can do for myself, all right? Um, so that's it. That's my hobby horse. Can we put it away? I won't ride it. All right. 182 shares. Let's go. Next NCLEX question. All right. A nurse is working on a psychiatric unit. Okay. A client taking an MAOI is seen in the clinic with the blood pressure. Here's the blood pressure. 180 over 99. What should the nurse ask this client first okay what should the nurse ask this client first number one to describe the foods that the client ate that day two inquire about grapefruit juice in the diet three to ask the client if increased activity was performed or four to ask the client when was the last time they had their vitamin D levels checked? Hmm. Okay. So here we go. A nurse is working. Um, a nurse is working in the psych unit. I see the answer is coming in already, but there's some of us that may not be quite prepared. Um, they're taking an MAOI and their blood pressure is high. It's it's really sky high, okay? It's 180 over 99. What should the nurse ask this client first? Oh my goodness. Number one, describe the foods the client ate that day. Two, to inquire about grapefruit juice in the diet. Three, 
to ask the client if increased activity was performed or four, to ask the client when was the last time they had their vitamin D levels checked. Hmm. I see all the answers rolling in. You guys are super smart. Oh, you guys are super smart today. All right. So if you didn't get this question right, I really want you to sit, settle down and I want you to, to consider studying psych, okay? Because this is a very uh, foundational um, safety. NCLEX loves to harp on this topic, all right? So the correct answer, as many of you guys have seen, is number one, to describe mm -hmm, the food that the client ate that day. Oh my goodness, when you're studying MAOIs, okay, MAOI inhibitors, you need to, you need to know, all right, you need to know that there is a direct correlation between tyramine and amonamine oxidase enzyme, all right? So let's do a little digging deeper because I'd like for us to understand um, why answers are answers. I, I just like it, all right? And I think you guys are at a position that you can understand. You're able to you're able to grasp these deeper principles. Okay, so um, monamine oxidase is a what? What is that? It's an enzyme, and literally in your body you have MAOs. All right, you have MAOs all throughout your body. You're born with them. Uh, you have you have monamine oxidase enzymes in your lungs. You have them in your liver. You have you have them in the placenta, like when you're born. You have them in your intestines. And the 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 MAOs, what they do is they break down tyramine that you uh, that you eat in foods. Like the enzymes that are in your stomach, I'm sorry, in your intestines, when the food hits it, it breaks it down, okay? And so that that deactivates the power of tyramine because it, it does have a potential to cause what? Really hypertensive events in the human body. So the enzymes that you're born with, they break down harmful substances. And the, the body is amazing. God made it so amazing, right? So, um, but however, however, if you're on a MAO inhibitor, it's going to block the power of that enzyme. So they found that MAOs, they also, they also, um, oh man, these enzymes also affect your neurological processes, right? So if they're, if they're not inhibited, they can cause you to have emotional triggers, right? So there, there's this medication that focuses on suppressing the enzymes, the monamine oxidase enzymes. Well, unfortunately, because you have these enzymes all over your body, it also attacks the enzymes in the GI tract. So when you consume foods with tyramine in them, yeah, you'll be happier, right? You won't, you won't feel your depression, but because the enzymes are blocked in your intestines, the tyramine from foods and beverages is going to build up in your body and you can stroke out because your blood pressure is super high. So you have to be on guard for any foods that have tyramine in them. And there are a lot of foods that have tyramine in them, all right? Yes, this is in the back of Five Star Quick Facts. There's a lot of foods that have tyramine in them. So even if you don't understand that you have these monamine oxidase enzymes in the body for NCLEX, you better know about the tyramine connection to MAOI inhibitors, okay? Um, another thing that I wanna say is that, um, oh, th there's, there's research, this is new research that smoking, smoking actually um, creates the same events in the body as an MAOI inhibitor. So people who smoke and who can't, sm who can't stop smoking because they're smoking for depression and anxiety, if they are put on 
a MAOI, then they're able to more easily give up smoking because they're using smoking to treat depression or anxiety. So I thought that was really cool. I thought that was really cool. All right. So I love, I love researching. I love reading and I love sharing with you guys. Okay. So if you guys are in the Remarner study group, let's focus on MAOIs and let's share what we know about them. All right. And I think that will bring everybody up. All right. Um, let's try this one. Here we go. Here we go. All right. A nurse is providing care for a female college student who said she was raped. <laughs> Which of the following should be used as a screening model? Number one, wife, F I F O W, I'm sorry, W I F E, wife, two, S bar. You guys know S bar, S B A R. We're talking about screening models for rape. Three is save, S A V E. Four is safe, S A V E. A F E. What are we going to use as a screening model for a client who says that they were raped? Mm. What do you say? Wife, S bar, save or safe? Okay. Everybody's picking. I just show. Let's see what I see. I see twos. I see twos. Lots of twos. Okay. Um, screening model. I see some threes. <laughs> All right. I see some twos. All right. Let me show you guys the answer. And thank you so much for participating, everybody. I do appreciate it. All right. So the answer is going to be save, save. And this stands for, look this up if you guys don't know save. All right. This stands for screen, ask, validate and evaluate, okay? And this is the screening model specifically for rape. It's not um, the communication tool. SBAR we use for communications between interdisciplinary teams, all right? Um, and I did go over interdisciplinary teams. I know I did, I know I did. I just can't think of when I did it, but it was a live event, I know, all right? Um, so that's what we're gonna use. That's what we're gonna use. Make a note of that. This is Let's Talk NCLEX, so it's okay. We're talking. We're talking NCLEX. It's okay if you haven't seen or heard anything. We're learning new things. We're growing. We're adding on to our foundations, okay? All right. I think I have one more. Do I have one more? Oh, okay. Let me, let me, um, oh, let me do this. Yes. These are my notes that I had took and I wanted to share. Rape, here we go. Rape is a prevalent issue on NCLEX because... Healthcare providers are uncomfortable with the subject. All right, so the reasons being, the reasons being, they lack all the time to screen all patients. And this is what, um, I read a research article and this is what it said. The reasons why um, healthcare providers are uncomfortable with the rape subject is they lack the time to screen all patients. They do not have a private place in which to screen patients. Um, they are not sure how to ask and they are not even sure how to respond if a patient says, yes, I've been raped. Yes, I've been abused. I, would you guys say that that was true? Would you guys say that that was true? I, I think so. Like, I, I know as a new nurse, especially as a new nurse, I wasn't equipped to have those types of conversations, right? I was not equipped to have those types of conversations. So it, it's relevant here, okay? Okay. Um, the SAVE method is adopted by the Florida Council Against Sexual Violence. And to just elaborate more on SAVE, it means to screen all of your patients for sexual violence. Okay. Screen all of your patients for sexual violence. Ask direct questions in a non judgmental way. Mm -hmm. Validate your patient's response. Oh, that's so important. If a client says, um, yes, I, I have been sexually abused, man. Don't just skip over that and say, okay, I'm going to call the doctor. Like, you know, say, I, I imagine that's been very difficult. You know, I'm so proud of you for sharing this, you know, just validate that transparency because they're sharing something that they don't have to share and that they're probably very afraid to tell people. 
So um, validate your patient's response and then evaluate, educate, and make referrals. Reva evaluate, educate, and make referrals. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, Nurse Collins. There has been some nurses who have been raped too. Yes, absolutely. Um, abuse, abuse. All right, so those are those are the notes for the save method and i think i did that because i knew that some of you guys probably had never heard of it before um so when i was preparing this i, I prepare monday motivations let's talk NCLEX days in advance and um i hope it's helpful to you guys okay here we go um oh here's another question all right a client with a history of schizophrenia has been admitted for suicidal ideation, okay? The client states, God is telling me to kill myself right now. The best response, the nurse's best response is to do what? Here we go. One, I understand you hear voices, but I do not hear anything. Two, have you taken your medication? Three, Let's turn down the television. Four, I hope the voices are not telling you to harm yourself now. So we have a client with history of schizophrenia. What is that? You need to know. Um, they have been admitted for suicidal ideation. The client states, God is telling me to kill myself right now. The, nurse, the nurse's best response is, I understand you hear voices, but I do not hear anything. Two, have you taken your medication? Three, let's turn the television down. The voices may be coming from the TV. Let's turn the TV down. Or four, I hope the voices are not telling you to harm yourself now. I hope that. I hope that they're not telling you to harm yourself now. <laughs> that seems very, that seems very, uh, like it's an inconvenience. Like, I hope they're not telling you to tar harm yourself now because I'm about to get off my shift. I have stuff to do. All right, so that's not the right one. Let's go. I see the answers coming in. Thank you guys for participating. Number, the correct answer is yes, number one. All right, you got to acknowledge your patient's feelings. All right, the, the client says, God is telling me to kill myself right now. You have to say, I understand. I, I understand you hear voices, but I do not hear anything. So absolutely, you have to, you have to, you have to acknowledge your patient's feelings. Yes, you do. That is number one primary but you also have to present reality. You have to let you have to let the client know you and I are not on the same page here. Okay, I do not hear anything. And clients with schizophrenia, you have to be very careful because um, schizophrenic patients are usually brilliant. I mean, literally, they have an intelligence that is superior, and so they understand that on some levels. They're wiser than most people, okay? Um, even the ones that I know in my life, like some of them are extremely intelligent, but they also struggle with um, perceiving reality. And so you have to let them know that you, you acknowledge where they are, but you're not having that same sensory perception, okay? And it causes them, it causes them to reevaluate what's normal, what's normal. Um, so in general, I think we have to be more compassionate and caring and understand that people can have mental diagnoses, diagnoses, sorry, um, but be very, very brilliant, brilliant minded people. So um, it's just a compassion thing, right? It's just a compassion thing. So acknowledging their feelings first will help them to receive whatever else you have to say. Because if you just shut them down or ignore them, they're not going to listen to you. They're not going to believe that you're going to help them. All right. They're not going to believe that you're going to help them. All right. Yes. People with schizophrenia, they're very brilliant. They, they know how to use all of the um, compensatory methods as anybody else. So uh, the comment was made 
um, very manipulative. Um, and I think that you can get people to manipulate you in any kind of sickness, literally in any kind of sickness. If a person has, you know, um, AIDS or if a person even has something like a fever, like it doesn't matter if people want to be manipulative, they can use whatever to do that. All right. Um, very, yes, very, very smart people with uh, mental illnesses can be very brilliant. All right. Okay. Real conversations, real nurses. This is real life nursing here. Real life nursing. Okay. Here we go. Which of the following drugs need a white blood cell level checked regularly? Which of the following drugs need a white blood cell count level checked regularly? Thank you for spending your Monday with me. All right. Number one, do is it diazepam? Two, is it clozapine? Three, is it amitriptyline? Or four, is it lithium? Mm -mm -mm. This is a good one. What are you at risk of? This is also, this is also in your quick facts. All right. Um, which medication needs a white blood cell count checked regularly? Diazepam, clonzapine, amitriptyline. Some people say amitriptyline um, or lithium, lithium. What say if you all, the answers are rolling in? Oh, yes. Here is the correct response. If you didn't know, it's this. All right. Number two. Yes. Um, clozapine is a dreaded typical antipsychotic. And you know why? Uh, these are not all that great because they have really bad, severe side effects. So that bone marrow depression, a granulocytosis, okay? It can cause infections, sore throats, signs of, you know, signs of illness. And it's really just, it's really just destroying your immune system. It's destroying your immune system. Yes. Thank you guys. I've been studying. You guys know this is a second generation. I love that. Um, atypical, antipsychotic. Ah, oh, the man, my psych review is on point. I'm telling you guys, you got to do it. You got to do it. You'll feel so much better about yourself when it comes to psychiatric medications or NCLEX. All right. Do I have another question? Let's check it out. I think this may be the last one. Sorry, I think this might be the last one. I I came on here to do four. We had the shares. Now I'm up to question number nine. Here we go. A nurse working on an endocrine, a nurse is working on an endocrine unit. Clients with central diabetes insipidus are treated with, are treated with, number one, is it glucagon? Two, insulin. Three, Vasopressin for propathyroduracil. Oh, yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, which one is it? You guys, if you know diabetes insipidus, go ahead and put the answer down. It should take you three seconds to do this question. Um, it should take you three seconds to do this question if you know, if you know what you're supposed to know. All right. This is a level one easy question. Thank you, nurse Abina. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate it. Um, you can pass NCLEX. Absolutely. Doesn't matter to me if you're internationally trained. Doesn't matter at all. All right. Here we go, you guys. All right. I got my diabetes insipidus experts in the house, obviously. Didn't take you long to figure this one out. Um, I thought it would be, I thought it would be challenging. But if you know diabetes insipidus, this is my point. When you know the content, these questions seem Muy facil. All right, here we go. The question is, oh, vasopressin. Yes, central diabetes insipidus. It requires the replacement of the ADH in your body, the anti-diuretic hormone. Absolutely. Um, the most commonly prescribed drug is the analog of ADH, desmopressin. So sometimes you'll see vasopressin, sometimes you will see 
um, desmopressin uh, as an option for your NCLEX exam. I think it's always great to know how medications can be given. So um, IV subcutaneously or as a nasal spray, okay? So just little things to remember when you're studying for your exam. Hearts on this video, if you're learning today, if you're learning today, you know, normally I usually don't provide all these background notes, but I was feeling it. I was feeling the explanations of these today. So I uh, hope you guys appreciate it. Now, I think that's it. I really do. I don't know if I have another question. I don't, I don't think that I do. Oh, I got one more. I do have one more. There was one more. Okay, last question, 10. 10 is the number. Oof. All right, this is a, this is a long remar. This is a long uh, motivational Monday, let's talk NCLEX. Thank you guys. Here we go. 10, the new nurse graduate is assigned to work with an unlicensed assistive personnel to provide care for a group of clients. All right, so here we are. This is what we're talking about. This is delegation. Which action by the nurse is the best method to evaluate whether delegated care is being provided? Okay, all right. So number one, where we're trying to see what's the best action to see whether delegated care is being provided. Is it number one, check with the clients to see whether they are satisfied to ask the charge nurse whether the unlicensed assistive personnel is qualified or three make rounds to see that the clients are being turned or four watch the uap perform all the delegated tasks what is the best method to evaluate whether delegated care is being provided? Oh, so this is a matter of, this is that management of care, coordinated care category. Whether you're taking NCLEX RN or NCLEX PN, you have to know how to um, manage the assignments of your um, assistive personnel. I, I'm sorry, you just have to know that, okay? So what do you guys say? What do you guys say is the correct answer? What do you guys say is the correct answer for it? How, do you, how are you gonna manage whether the UAP is doing what they're supposed to be doing? If they're qualified, if they know what they're supposed to do, how are you gonna manage it? All right, love Kiki, I see you. <laughs> I see you, all right. The correct answer, Remar nurses, yeah, yes, Remar nurses. Oh, oh, I see threes. I see fours. Thank you for being here uh, for the first time. Uh, Yannick, thank you for being here. All right. Threes and fours and ones and twos and ones and twos. Okay. No further ado. The correct answer is going to be uh, number three. Yes. Make rounds. Did you get this one? You need to make rounds to see that that the clients are being turned. This is something that nurses, you're responsible, all right? You're responsible to actually physically check to see that the work is being done because it's something that you delegated. And when you delegate something, that means you give a person the ability to perform the task, but if for whatever reason they don't perform that task, guess who's still responsible for it? Is it the person? Is it the person who said they were gonna do it? Is it the person who wrote it down and promised they were gonna do it? No, it's you, it's you. So the best thing, the most reasonable thing for the nurse to do is to actually make rounds to see that it's being done. Let's just go over why the other answers were not right, okay? So we're talking about how we're going to evaluate the care is provided. Are we gonna check with the client to see whether they're satisfied with the care? Are we gonna ask the patient, hey, you know what? Is, is Trisha, is she doing what she's supposed to be doing in here? Is that the best? <laughs> I'm being so, you know, is Trisha doing what she's supposed to be? Did Trisha turn you? 
you know, the client's going to say, yes, Trisha's doing everything. She's so nice. We come in here. We talk about my grandkids. You know, she gave me some extra graham crackers. No, but is Trisha providing nursing care to you that is uh, competent and safe? The client's not going to know. They're not going to know. They're not going to know if they were turned two hours. They are not going to know. And so you can't take um, a client's word on nursing care because they don't know. They don't know nursing care. You know, some clients really do think they come into the hospital to, you know, have a companion like or have somebody be nice to them. Like those things some people don't get like the elderly. OK, this is another hobby horse. Nobody brought it out, but I'm still going to bring it out and ride it. Most of our elderly patients have very little physical touch. And that's something that um, that's something that shocks people like all of our life. We're used to being touched physically. Right. When we're a baby, we're being held. You know, as we, you know, become adults, we have love partners and, you know, we, we have our children who constantly are hugging us and holding us. But when you become a senior, if you don't have a life companion and you don't have family members that are touchy feely, there are very few opportunities for you to be physically stimulated. So most elderly people are, um, they're physically neglected because they're just not touched. They're not hugged. Imagine the people that live in nursing homes and assisted living. How often do you see anybody hugging them? Never, never. So sometimes when clients come into the hospital, um, you know, just the nurse coming in and touching their back or holding their hand is phenomenal, right? There's, you can do no wrong. You have extreme power over that person. So we just can't, uh, we just can't have them to evaluate nursing care. Okay. So that's why that one is wrong. Hobby horse put away. All right. Um, ask the charge nurse whether the UAP is qualified. That sounds very good. That sounds very, very good because you're asking somebody who essentially is supposed to be an authority. It sounds good, but it's not right. Okay. It's not right because the, the charge nurse can say, oh yeah, Trisha, she's qualified. I mean, yeah, she, she comes from the MICU. She's been there 20 years. Yes. Is she qualified? Absolutely. She's qualified. But does that mean that Trisha is doing her job? No, that doesn't mean it at all. Again, this is not a way to verify that Trisha is doing what she's supposed to do. All right. Not, not, not at all. And then four, watch the UAP perform all delegated tasks. Mm. Now, that's interesting because it, it sounds good and it's a partial truth. <laughs> it's a partial truth, right? You do want to watch them do some things, but I mean, do you have time as a nurse to watch the UAP do everything, all the delegated tasks? No, you don't have time to do that. Actually, if you're sitting there watching them do it, you might as well just do it yourself. Like that's the thing about it. So it's not going to be the best choice for the nurse, the practical nurse or the registered nurse to um, to watch. Number four, watch the UAP perform all delegated tasks. And I saw that I saw that um, I saw a lot of people have picked number four because you do have to verify that they can do some things. But that all the delegated tasks, mm -mm, mm -mm, that's not going to be the most appropriate for you to do. So it's number, it's number three, it's number three. And this is just part of what you may see when you take your NCLEX exam. You have to know, you have to know about the scopes of practices, okay? The first of scopes of practices. Thank you. There's so many of us that are here for the first time. I hope you enjoyed this study session. We're learning, we're learning. Okay, a lot of the information that we went over today is deeply rooted in the DVD self-study program. It's a program that I created specifically for nursing students studying their exam. I love this program because I, I created it for international nursing students. First time, uh, I'm sorry, first time nursing students repeat test takers. So if you're any of those categories, this is the program for you. If you're an international nursing student, if this is your first time taking NCLEX, if this is your seventh time taking NCLEX, you will learn, you will learn. The method is simple, straight to the point.
hey, you know what? We are paying for this nurse to take her NCLEX. And I'm super excited about it. All right. Oh, nurse Valentina J is going to be taking the NCLEX PN. She is from Hamilton, New Jersey. And we're paying for her NCLEX. Oh, congratulations, Nurse Valentin. You you have gotten your email that says we're paying for NCLEX. Um, we're, we do this every week. Every week you guys know, oh my goodness, every week you guys know that we are picking a nursing student and we're paying for them to take NCLEX specifically because they invested in themselves. So anyone who purchases the DVD self-study package, your name is in a drawing and you get pulled and you know what? You get the ability to get your NCLEX paid for, all right? If you win the drawing. It's a pleasure, it's a pleasure. Yes, it's a pleasure um, to be here with you guys. Now, I have to go back to Remar Nurse University. Again, for you guys that just joined, if you are watching and you signed up for the bundle package, the t-shirts are in, the t-shirts are in. They came in today. So um, again, for the bundle package, you can watch, you can watch the lectures online for free. If you can watch the lectures online for free or you can bundle and save, all right? So you can pay um, the $25 and the $25 to attend Remar University. You're not paying for the lectures because the lectures are free. What you're paying for is you get a t-shirt, okay? The t-shirt, you're also paying for the workbook that goes with the class, all right? This is a this is a physical workbook that I'm sending from the office to your home. There's no PDF versions of this book. So if you get the workbook again, I showed this earlier. You can go back and watch it. Um, but the workbook has the pre-class questions. Um, like I don't know, I know what's in this book, um, but it has the pre-class questions, uh, the case studies. I did uh, I did a lot of case studies. The NCLEX activity pages for Remar Nurse University. We'll go over them during the lecture. And it has just the skeleton of the lecture notes, the homework, the final exam. Again, you don't have to, you don't have to purchase this. You can just watch the lectures and take notes in your own workbook. You can go to the dollar store, buy a notebook, take notes. All right. I suggest you have the, the workbook though, because it will make the experience so much better. I'm telling you, you'll be able to answer the questions before class. You'll be able to uh, do the homework, things like that, the activity pages. Um, so just bundle and save. You get the T-shirt, you get the workbook, um, you get priority seating for those of you who are coming to the live event. And you also, if you want to purchase the DVD package, that bundle will give you an additional discount on top of the regular discount of the DVD self-study package. So literally... $25, you get so much. We literally could have charged $25 just for the shirt, all right? But no, we're giving blessings on top of blessings on top of blessings, all right? Uh, so questions about Remar Nurse University. It's happening next month in May. It's happening next month in May. Monday nights, the class is one night, one night, all right? Here is the schedule. Here is the schedule. Chicago, I will be in Chicago May 6th. If you're in Chicago, get to this class. Just come to the class, all right? Sign up for the event. Get your workbook. Get your T-shirt. Bring your nursing class to Remar Nurse University. It's one night. It's one night, okay? Monday night, and it begins. Put the starting time on there. <laughs> all right. Um, Atlanta. I'm going to Atlanta May the 13th. It's my first time in Atlanta. I want to see nursing students. I want to see nursing students. All right, there. I am coming to New York. I'm coming to New York, Miss Nopez. All right, the next week, I, and literally, I'm traveling. I'm dragging my body to every of these cities, okay? Um, when you sign up for the event, when you sign up for the location, you get the address, all right? You get the address. It's on the page. All right, so Chicago, May 6th. Atlanta, May 13th, 7 p.m. every night. It starts at that time. So if you're in Chicago, we're starting 7 p.m. your time. All right. So everybody that's watching online has to get online 7 o'clock Chicago time. All right. I'm not adjusting 
for anybody that's watching online, I have to give the priority to the people who are there. But the beauty of it is you get to watch that class, even if you're not there. You just make sure you're there at 7 o'clock Chicago time. The next week, I'm going to be in Atlanta, 7 o'clock Monday night, Atlanta time. I'm going live from the class. So you have to there. Yes, this is for nursing students. This is for graduates. It's called Remar Nurse University because we're trying to get the graduates that are graduating in April and May before they take NCLEX, okay? Before they take NCLEX, we want you guys to be prepared for your exam. I don't want you to be repeat test takers. I want you to be ready the first time. And so Remar Nurse University, every Monday, we'll be going through the workbook. So if you have the workbook, you'll be able to do week one. If you're in Chicago, you come to Chicago class, we do the first week together. The next week, you'll have to watch at home because I'll be in Atlanta. I'll pick up from the workbook on week two in Atlanta, okay? Week three, I'll be in Los Angeles. I'm going all the way to Los Angeles, and I'll be starting at 7 p.m. L.A. time. So all of us here... All of us here on the East Coast will have to adjust to L.A. time. And that's OK, because the people in Los Angeles have been adjusting to us on the East Coast for so long. Like we do Monday motivations at 12 o'clock. They get up early to watch Monday motivations for us. So when I go to Los Angeles, I'm doing it at seven o'clock their time. OK. Um, after that, where I'm going to be, I got to come all the way back to New York. So if you're in. Um, if you're in that New York area, New Jersey, you can make this class. I'm just coming to New York and I'll actually be spending, I guess, Memorial Day. May 27th, I'll be in New York. And then uh, we're extending Remarters University into June. So I'll be taking myself and my workbook to Miami to spend the first week of June, that first Monday in June in Miami. All right. So get there. Remar will be there. Uh, Mark will be there. The team will be there. I know we're going to have a great time. I know we're going to do the prayer thing. I know we're going to um, just get you guys ready for your NCLEX exam. All right. So you don't want to miss this. This is the only time that we do Remar Nurse University. We do it one time a year. It takes an extreme amount of effort on all of the, like the Remar team. It's a month long NCLEX review for free for you guys. Where else are you going to find that? I, I don't know. I, I literally, I don't know. But um, here at Remar, we're, we're pioneers, okay? We're pioneers at what we do here. So we hope that you take this opportunity, take advantage of it. We're excited to meet you guys. We're excited to meet you guys. All right. So sign up for the event. Uh, let me put the let me put the website back up so you guys can go to the event. You get all the details there. All right. Here's the here's where you sign up for. Go ahead, plug this in right now. Remartnurse.com backslash R's and Roger N is in November. You as an umbrella, remarnurse.com backslash RNU. you. All right, so I'm expecting 500 people to be signing up today just because, and I don't even know, I mean, we've had hundreds of people sign up for this event, so I'm expecting it to be awesome, amazingly awesome. All right, 1,500 people right now. <laughs> All right, is that is that just today? All right. Um, so any questions or comments, please email me support at remarreview.com. It is the best way for you to get your questions uh, to me so we can address this. So we can address this. All right. OK. Thank you guys for staying on with me so long. Two hours today. Come on. That's crazy. We did some great studying, though. We did some great motivation, some great studying. I have to leave you guys with this. Um, you guys are my friends. Uh, and I like to say this little thing because I truly believe that it is the epitome of the mission here. We can, we will, we must pass NCLEX. Thank you guys so much for studying with me. It's a pleasure. If you missed this episode or if you wanted to just study or listen in your car, don't forget we have Remar Nurse Radio. All right. So you can download the podcast. And you can go over this with us again here. Remar Nurse Radio, we're taking over the airwaves. Uh, so check us out. You can get us on Spotify. You can get us on the Apple Store. I mean, 
somebody put up the link. All right. Uh, I will see you guys next week. Bye.